Welcome to the kill test. Double kill. The War Galak. Originating in the Philippines during the 16th century, the War Galak featured a straight double-edged blade with no tip. Due to the Spanish occupation at the time, Filipinos were outlawed from having pointed swords, and the blade was often used for vegetation and chopping wood. However, by the Philippine Revolution in 1896, Filipinos adapted to the tipless weapon, and it became a weapon of war. It was so effective in battle, it inspired later variations of the weapon, such as the British military's army galak in the early 1950s. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. My name is Matt Wagner. I run an auto body restoration shop, and I work with metal every day. I started watching Forge and Fire, and one day I was like, you know what? I think I can do that. I'm ready to crank this baby up. I'm anxious because I've never made a sword this long. I want to win this competition because I've always thought I was meant to do something better. My main concern is quenching the blade because it could create massive warping. This is the big moment. Ha <laughs> ha, that's freaking straight. So now that I'm quenched, I'd like to take a couple whacks at a piece of wood just to see what's going to happen. I've shattered my blade into three pieces. This is an epic failure. I'm running out of time. I'm going to have to start over. I might not finish this thing. My plan is to use a piece of leaf spring and get a complete sword forged out in one day. I'm working on a deadly timeline, and I am just busting my I got to get my quench done by the end of day four, because I don't know if I have a good blade yet. I may have to build another one tomorrow. You never know. It's cool pretty quick. I'm running out of time. If this blade doesn't harden with this quench, I'm really screwed. I got my fingers crossed. We've got a hard blade. I am super happy. Looks like I'm going to have something for the big show. <laughs> my name's Brian Schmidt. I believe my great-grandfather was a blacksmith. So when I saw Forged and Fire, I wanted to try and make my own blades and just create memories with my family. I think I have a pretty good chance of winning. The basic shape of my blade is in there now. This is going to be the war golic. The blade's looking really nice. We've got the handle set up for a lot of work today. The handle's made out of maple. It's also the part of the knife where I'm customizing it for myself a little bit. Yeah, not so bad. I think they turned out pretty nice. I sharpened my blade three times. That thing's razor sharp. All right. Feels good. Now. I want to go test the blade. And my son is joining me. Ready? All right, here we go. Ooh, awesome. That thing slices right through. It feels good in my hand, so I think it's going to do well. All right. Very deadly. Bladesmiths, to see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your sword and deliver hacks and slashes on this big carcass. Brian, you're up first. You ready for this? Absolutely. Depending on where you hit that blade, you know, it can always snap apart. Bladesmiths, but unfortunately, I'm still recovering from an injury. So, Anthony, one of my senior instructors of Markai Kali, will be the butcher to your pork chop. All right, Brian, let's talk about your blade. First up, your edge is razor sharp. It lacerated easily through bones, through the spine. The one issue here is that you have a very blocky handle. Aside from that, it will kill. Good job. Thanks. Matt, ready to chop? I've been ready. Let's do this. I'm really nervous. But as long as this blade doesn't wrap around in a circle and hug this pig, I'm in good shape. Okay, Matt, its balance and weight is very forward for a chopper. 
but your edge is sharp enough to lacerate into the carcass. It did chop the spine, it did chop bone. This will kill. Thank you. Gentlemen, this is a strength test. To test the strength and durability of your edge, I'm gonna chop into these huge logs 10 times. Remember, this test is all about what happens to your weapons and not what happens to the logs. Brian, you're up first, are you ready? I think so, yeah. All right. Your edge held up perfectly. There's no bending, no warping, just still razor sharp all the way down. Man, it was fun to swing. Well done. Thank you. Matt, you're up. You ready? Give it a try. All right. Well, Matt, there's so much forward weight that it actually bent that way. On the plus side, your edge helped beautifully. I mean, there's no problems with that edge at all. It's still very sharp, but this S-bend in it, it's significant. Bladesmiths, you both brought in some pretty extraordinary historic weapons, but in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Brian, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Matt, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Matt, your blade is impressive. We saw that it could kill. But unfortunately, in the strength test, it took a significant bend. And it's for that reason we have to let you go. I understand. Matt, please surrender your galak. Even with losing at the end of the day, I don't feel like I really lost because I went way further than I ever expected. I don't know enough about it yet that I can make that perfect blade. So, you know, I'll keep learning. Brian, you are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Please present your weapon to the judges. It feels great to be Forged and Fire champ. I can't believe I won. It's awesome. I would say if somebody wants to start learning how to make a knife, start out watching Forge and Fire. Just start at episode one. Binge watch. The Zande Spear. Ooh, boy. One of the deadliest weapons used by the Zande tribes of Central Africa, the Zande Spear was used for fighting as well as for hunting. Known throughout history as conquering warriors, the Zande exhibited unmatched skills on the battlefield. Affixed to a wooden shaft, the spear was suitable for throwing and attacking from long distances, but its thrusting ability made it just as effective as a close combat weapon. The sharp upper and lower tines and multiple spikes inflicted deadly wounds both upon entry and exit from the victim's body. The Zande's lethal use of the spear can be seen highlighted in the game Deadliest Warrior. Good luck. We'll see you in five days. My name is Drew Goodson. I'm 18 years old. I started bladesmithing seriously because of this show, and I study mechanical engineering at Louisiana Tech. I've noticed that Doug liked recurved blades. I don't know if that's how he likes his women curvy, but my grandmother has totally got a crush on him, especially when he says it will kill. I've taken that 20-inch piece of steel, and just by doing that much, drawn it to over 21 inches. I want to get the spearhead completely forged today. I'm going to forge weld two pieces of steel on either end of this, because it's getting thin. And I don't want this to bend in the slightest. I know in the testing, they're going to abuse my weapon, but I'm not worried about it, because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I ding myself in the head. Ow. Three, two, one. I'm sitting here waiting for a ping or a pop or something scraping, but I don't hear it. Just a nice little sizzle.
Oh, God. I just lost part of my time. This little freaking thin one, it broke off. I'm freaking out right now. That's really not good. I don't have enough steel to make another time. I have to start over making another blade. I've got three hours to get this done, and I've just got to get at it. Once I've done this, I'm going to cut in, stick it in the forge, and spread those out. Good plan, good plan. And I've allotted the entire day to finishing the shaft of the spear. Fitting, sharpening, nothing big. The tang doesn't quite fit in the shaft. Why, why is this happening? I'm almost over the height requirement. Uh, OK, crisis averted. I'm all good. I don't even know what I feel right now. OK. Let the panic. Get, get over, yep. Yep, can chill out. OK. Bladesmiths, I will take your zonding spear and deliver killing blows on this ballistic dummy. Drew, you're up first. You ready? Let's make those intestines out testins. <laughs> All right, let's do that. I like that. Right now, I'm about to hear Doug say it would kill. And that's the only thing I'm here for. To help me out today, please welcome back RJ Markaida. He will have the pleasure of wielding your zombie spear. Right, Drew, it feels very good in the hand. It lacerates deep when we thrust this into the chest cavity, into the heart, on its way out. Not only does it take some skin with it, but it also took out some ribs. Your times right here from the side entry, the spear went all the way through and on its way out, it took everything that was in its path. But there is one issue. As you can see, your tip right here broke off. But other than that, this is a weapon that is deadly and it will kill. Thank you. All right, Jason, your turn. You ready? I know it will <laughs> cut. <laughs> All right, Jason. The balance of your weapon feels good. When it penetrated into the chest cavity, it hit a rib and broke it in half, got into the heart, and there was no edge damage on your tip. All these hooks right here did what it's supposed to do. Into the abdomen, ripped everything out, even the barb. And the beautiful thing about this is it will kill. That's what I wanted to hear. Say hello to my little friend here. Today, we're going to test the overall strength and construction of your Zande spears by, well, we're going to fire them out of this cannon into this wood block wall. Now, I'm not concerned about what your spears do to the wall. I want to see how well your spears survive the wall. Drew, you're up first. Are you ready? No. <laughs> well, we're going to do it anyway. Let's do it. That worked really well, Drew. Despite the fact that you did lose a little bit of your tip in the kill test, didn't have any effect going into that block wall. Matter of fact, you sunk all the way down here. Very impressive. Your shaft is fine. Nothing loosened up, nothing cracked. Your spear head is still solid. Overall, survived. Very good. Thank you. So Jason, what are you thinking? Thinking, let's make splinters. That's a problem. Oh, God, no. I'm seeing it hang up a bit on the barrel, and my heart just absolutely sinks. Jason, we've got a big problem here. 
The parameters that we set for these weapons are for testing purposes. Because your blade didn't meet the inch and a half parameter with a circular cross section, we cannot fit the shaft of your weapon down the barrel of our testing apparatus here. And because we can't test it evenly and fairly with Drew's blade, I have to ask you to please leave the forge. This was absolutely worst case scenario. I'm proud that I got this far, but I'm incredibly disappointed. Well, Drew, in a competition where attention to detail is just as critical as craftsmanship, you are the Forge and Fire champion and will be collecting a check for $10,000. Good job. Oh, my god. Oh. How do you feel right now? I'm 18-year-old, and I'm the Forged and Fire champion. What, what just happened? Well, I think the best blade just won, my friend. Come over here and shake our hands. Oh, god. Didn't want to win this way, but I won. And that's kind of all that matters. I started bladesmithing seriously because of the show. I learned all that I had to learn to make it here. And I just won. This, this is the dream. Oh my god, man. <laughs> The Mesopotamian Sickle Sword. <laughs> the Sickle Sword originated in Mesopotamia at the height of the Bronze Age, around 2500 BC. These sickle and curved shaped swords often symbolized royalty and power and were primarily wielded during ceremonies by kings and authority figures. Although these swords were not common on the battlefield, the belly of the blade allowed for quick, devastating blows and inspired designs for later weapons, such as the deadly Egyptian kopech. Good luck. We will see you in four days. Go. My name is Robert Taylor. I'm from Brentwood, California. I'm a sergeant with the San Francisco Sheriff's Department. I took up bladesmithing because I'd like to watch the Forge and Fire. It's something I really wanted to go further in, become an ABS smith, maybe a master smith someday, because I love forging. So I'm gonna go 500 layers of Damascus on each side with a 1084 center core. All right, we're going for our final forge weld. As long as I'm solid with my steel, 1084 will give it more stronger center. Uh, the place where I want the bend will bend down, and then the tip will start bending up automatically as I hit it. I'm whacking it on the horn to get it to bend down. It's easier than using the hammer. I like it. Got the build all ready for the quench. If this quench doesn't go right, I'm going to have to go ahead and start over, and that's going to suck. Went in pretty hot. We'll see if we have any bad forge welds. We have a hard blade. I want to keep it light enough and balanced enough for somebody to swing it. Getting there. Feel really good about my weapon. Getting all the fit up done. I think this thing's going to slice anything they put before it. <laughs> Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. So to find out what kind of lethal damage they will do, I'm going to take your weapons and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistic dummy. Take me up first. Ready? Cut the head off. Let's do that. Jacob, let's talk about your sickle sword right here. Your edge is razor sharp. Coupled with the fact that this is a very light weapon, I can use velocity to really wield that sharp edge. It cuts deep into this ballistics dummy. And overall, sir, your weapon will kill. Thank you. All right, Robert, your turn, sir. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. All right, Robert, let's talk about your sickle sword. It's a very light blade, that much lighter than the other one. And the angle that you have in here lends itself to use not only velocity, but the sharpness of your edge to cut very deep into this ballistics dummy. And overall, sir, you will kill. Thank you. 
Blitzmiths, welcome to the strength test, the Armored Warrior Chop. Test the strength and overall durability of your Mesopotamian sickle swords. I'm gonna be chopping into these armored warriors. Jacob, you're up first, you ready for this? I don't think I get a choice. You don't have a choice. <laughs> What actually happened is your sword bit into the other sword by about 3 sixteenths of an inch, and it took out this chip. And once that chip was gone, the whole sword blew up. Your grain looks good, but unfortunately, uh, it's just this sword against that sword. This time, that sword won. Yep. All right, Jacob, we hate to see this happen. You gave us a beautiful blade, but unfortunately, it did suffer a catastrophic failure on the seventh strike but you are not out of the fight yet, because Robert, in order to become the champion, you will have to survive every single one of those seven strikes on the Armored Warrior. Are you ready? Let's roll the dice. All right, Ben. Robert, the big thing is, it's one sword. Nice job. Thank you. Well, Robert, you made it through all the testing. Jacob, it's a beautiful piece of work. Unfortunately, due to your catastrophic failure, we cannot continue testing. And for that reason, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thank you, gentlemen. It was an honor. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Very nice job. Thank you. Uh, you know, it, it totally sucks. But I really am proud of the blade I made either way. You know, they said pretty much nothing but good things about it up until it broke. And well, I'd totally come back for this and maybe get a shot at making it all the way through. Well, Robert, we never like to see competitors' blades break, but yours did not. And that makes you the newest Forge and Fire champion. You just got yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Feel pretty good? Crazy, dude. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Winning this championship, I think, has really pushed me to my limits, and then that makes me want to push them even more. Now I'm a champion, I'm going to go ahead and get my ABS Smith membership and just really refine my skills. The Serrated Indian Saber. The Serrated Indian Saber traces its origins back to 18th century India. The deadly weapon features a long curved blade with serrated edges designed to intimidate enemies and penetrate deep into the thick leather armor worn by infantry and cavalry forces of the time. This blade played an important role as the sword used by Indian forces during the bloody 1857 uprising against British rule, known as the Sapoy Mutiny. Without further ado, guys, good luck. We will see you in four days. Good luck. Kill it, brother. My name is Mark Smith. I'm from China Spring, Texas. Uh, I'm a design engineer for a local bank equipment manufacturer. Season three of Forged in Fire, I started watching it. But about that time, I weighed close to 400 pounds. Forged in Fire was a driver to get more healthy. I lost about 150 pounds from bladesmithing, and life is good. It's taking more time than I anticipated to get the material down to the thinness that I want. And then we'll be ready to go and start doing the features of the saber. Fitting the guard, I have to be careful. If I remove too much material off the inside of the guard, there's going to be big gaps. It's not going to fit tight. And if it doesn't, I'm probably going to have to redo the guard. It should be fine. It should be OK. So I'm quenching the blade today. 
I don't think I can get it any straighter than that. There's no cracks and everything's looking pretty good right now. I dyed the epoxy gold because it looks cool and it's close to the bronze guard. I think it has a nice touch to it. Winning this competition would be like winning the Super Bowl. It's about showing that Forged in Fire has turned my life around and given me the skills to do this. <laughs> Bladesmiths, welcome to the dynamic kill test. Mark, you're up first. You ready for this? Blades ready. All right, Mark, let's talk about your weapon here. Your handle is a little bit on the rounded side, but the saving grace is this flare that you have there. It allowed me to get my hand in here and it's locked in between your guard and your pummel. Good on that. Now you did pick up one small chip where it cut the bone, but other than that, it'll kill. Thank you. I know your turn, so you ready? I'm ready. All right, Ira, first up, the slices into this ballistic dummy, thrusting and using the teeth, I can really feel everything on the blade. But what's more important is the wieldability of this weapon. It's so nice and light, and I can control every move. Overall, sir, your Indian serrated saber, you will kill. All right, gentlemen, welcome to our dynamic strength test, sticking with our sheet metal theme our sheet metal chop and bag slice. So Mark, you're up first, you ready? She's got this, but I might need a hug. <laughs> All right, Mark right off. Your blade is still in the shape it came in. Felt good cutting. It's a little on the forward heavy side. I would have seen that balance just a little bit further back, but it didn't affect the cuts at all. So good job. Thank you. Ready to play, Ira? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I am. So Ira, first off, the shape and scale of this is really beautiful. The way it just flows from one point to the other, the taper, really, really nice. You took one chip in the blade right here, but other than that, man, this is still, I'm not gonna run my finger down this blade. It's uh, still sharp. Well done. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, in the first two rounds of this competition, you both proved your worth by making knives out of sheet metal. 
And in this final round, you both knocked it out of the park with the most intricate blades I've seen in a long time. But in this competition, only one of you can take home the title and a check for $10,000. Our judges did agree that today's Forge of Fire champion is... Ira, congratulations. Now, Mark, unfortunately, at this point, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the Forge floor. Been a tremendous pleasure. Thank you, sir. Good job, Mark. I'm happy that it came down to such details. I think any other competition, I could have gone home a winner. Well, Ira, congratulations, sir. You are the newest Forge of Fire champion, and you just received a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Just one Forge and Fire. It feels pretty awesome. That's a beautiful example of that weapon. I think you nailed it. Well Thank done. You. The whole experience has been super fun from the stressful part of building the first knife, playing with the coal iron press. I think that's where the money's going. Sergeant Hayden Sword. Sergeant William Hayden, one of the first English colonists in 17th century Connecticut, is best known for his heroic actions during the Pequod War of 1637. After rising tensions between the colonists and the Pequod tribe erupted, Hayden and a group of English settlers were sent to capture territory in modern-day Mystic, Connecticut. During the battle, with a sharp swipe of his single-edged, slightly curved blade, Hayden famously cut the string of a Pequod warrior's bow that was taking direct aim at the English captain, John Mason, saving his life. The original historic sword is still on display today in Connecticut's Historical Society Museum in Hartford, Connecticut. So good luck. We will see you in four days. Good luck. Good luck. My name is Stephanie Ayuto. I am 31 years old. I live in New York City, and I am a part-time bladesmith. I've always had an appreciation for knives and armor. So I Googled, you know, New York City bladesmith, and I found Theo Nez, who is a former contestant on Fortune Fire. He won his round back in season three and then his champion's round. And yeah, now we're just forging buddies, and I'm happy to keep making new knives. My blade's the right length, curve is the right depth. I'm feeling good, and I'm ready to quench. This is the moment of truth. Just like glass, successful quench. I am feeling good, I am feeling tired, but good. I've got my mild steel bar in the forge, bringing up to temp. Once it's at the right temperature, I'm gonna be pressing it down, trying to turn a long tube into a short pancake. I'm a little behind where I'd like to be. Barely made a dent. Spent a couple of hours working on my guard, but it isn't doing what I want it to do. I've got to scrap this and start fresh. <sighs> I got to change now or the whole day is going to be sunk. That might work. OK. It's the end of the day, I'm looking at my guard. It's a little fugly at the moment, but there's nothing TLC can't fix. Let's do it. Slow and steady. Don't want to break anything. All right. Hello, boys. I am ready to show my friends, Theo and Justin, two former Forge and Fire contestants. Well, that's looking deadly. Very proud of you. That looks great. Thank you, thank you. I'm just excited to see the judges use it. Laysmiths, welcome to the keel test. To find out how lethal your weapons are, I'm going to take your weapons and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistic dummy. Stephanie, you're up first. You ready for this? Go have your fun. All right, Stephanie, let's talk about your sword here. Your edge is sharp. I mean, that's one of the cleanest decapitations I've done with a sword. Overall, your weapon, it will kill. Thank you. All right, Nathan, are you ready? It's your turn, sir. You bet.
All right, Nathan, let's talk about your sword here. Those are very deep cuts. Every swing penetrated deep, every thrust went all the way through. Your weapon, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, you know what time it is. It's time for the strength test. To test the strength and durability of your blades, I'll be attacking our wooden palisades here. Stephanie, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. All right, so Stephanie, in the test, your blade held up really well. There's a one small chip it took and then maybe a little bit of a glinting spot here, but it's still sharp. When we get back to here, your tang kind of kicks this way and then sort of curves back this way. And what that does is every time I hit, it kind of rides forward into that guard. Didn't really hurt my knuckle, but over time, it's gonna be an issue. But everything's tight. It held up really well in this test. Good job. Thank you. All right, Nathan, you're up. You ready? You bet. So Nathan, really nicely done. I ran my fingernail down that blade, and I cannot feel any deformation, any next nothing. So it's pristine. Your handle shape, comfortable. It's got that nice flair to it. The guard's out of my way, so I'm not hitting it. Nicely done. Good sword. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, this is the sharpest test, the fish slice. Now, a sharp edge should be able to cut all the way through this fish, and that's what I'd like to see. Stephanie, you're first. You ready for this? Go do your thing. All right, Stephanie, let's talk about your weapon here. When cutting through the salmon, no issues at all. It cut all the way through. Now, when you got to the grouper, which is a scalier and thicker fish, you went more than half. Overall, you will cut. Thank you. All right, Nathan, your turn. So you ready? You bet. All right, Nathan, let's talk about your weapon here. Your edge, when cutting through the salmon, no resistance, easy cuts. On the grouper, you cut in more than half. Overall, your weapon, you will cut. Thank you. Well, Bladesmiths, in this third round, we ask you to go back to your home forges for four days and come back with strong, sharp Sergeant Hayden swords. And you both did it. Now, in this competition, only one of you can go home the champion. And our judges have talked it through, and they've made a decision. Today's Forge and Fire champion is... Nathan, congratulations, man. Now, Stephanie, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. This has been a crazy journey. I'm very proud of my work, but coming so close that you can almost taste it, I definitely want to come back and give it one more go to see if I can be the Forge and Fire champion. Well, Nathan, you know what that means, man. You are the Forge of Fire champion, and you just got yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. I cannot believe I won. I know it happened. It doesn't quite seem real. How do you feel? I have no idea. <laughs> Making this weapon, I, I put everything I had into it, trying to make something nice, and I'm overwhelmed. I cannot believe I won. I'm Nathan Butcher. I'm the Forge and Fire champion.